Hello everyone, my name is Tuesday and today I will show you how to turn Fallout 4 into Fallout 76. And we're going big on this one. I'm not just gonna show you a couple of mods that will only add a couple of things, no. I'm gonna show you everything. Every mod that's out there right now that adds even the slightest change that was implemented into Fallout 76. Except for the multiplayer aspect of course, but we're not leaving one stone unturned besides that. This will be the most complete list of mods that will turn Fallout 4 into Fallout 76. And the way I'm going to be doing this is by going all the way back to the very first tease of what was to be Fallout 76 and make a journey to what the game is now. So from the very first Twitch livestream teaser of Fallout 76 to the Wild Appalachia DLC, we will search through it all and if possible, we will mod it. So sit down. Relax, maybe grab a snack, and let's turn Fallout 4 into Fallout 76 without it being the boring buggy mess of a game it is. So let's go back to late May 2018. A Bethesda Twitch stream appears, showing nothing more than a Vault Boy statue and a monitor displaying the message, please stand by. My god, the hype was real, and as it turned out, when starting up the game you will see the same message, which will bring us to the very first mod of today called Fallout 76 Splash Screen. When starting up your game you will now get to see the same please stand by message as in Fallout 76. Necessary? Well, not really, since you will probably skip it 99% of the time, but hey, it's a nice mod to start off with. Not long after, on the 30th of May, a teaser trailer appears giving us a very first glance on Fallout 76. We don't see much except for a vault, but hold on, what is that? A Fallout 76 jumpsuit that has shiny gold numbers? That looks good! Which brings us to the next mod, the Vault 76 jumpsuit, available for both PC and Xbox. This mod will add the jumpsuit to your game and also comes with some lore on how it turned up here all the way in the Commonwealth. You can find it at a crash Fentybird site right next to Fault 111, which is now being guarded by some raiders. After walking up and getting rid of these raiders, you will see some cardboard boxes in which you can find the jumpsuits, and boy do they look good. Look at that shine! June 10th, 2018 E3 press conference. The trailer drops, giving us a very first look on the beauty of Fallout 76. And after the trailer, Todd said something else. We always start with the world, and this time it features all new rendering, lighting, and landscape technology. It allows us to have 16 times the detail. 16 times the detail. That's a lot of detail. However, at the release of the game, we didn't see much of all this detail. Which brings us to the next mod called Vivid Fallout, available for both PC and Xbox, which brings in a lot of detail. You can choose between 1K, 2K or even 4K textures. The changes are remarkable, everything is different. The grass, the walls, the concrete, everything. And the best thing about it, it doesn't even make your game lag, not even a bit. And that's impressive. Let's fast forward a bit. November 14th, 2018, the game releases. It's a mess, but we aren't here for that. As soon as we leave the vault, we find ourselves in a big green lush. It's beautiful. Which brings us to the very next mod called Boston Natural Surroundings. This is PC only, but don't you worry Xbox users, I got you covered. But first, let's talk about the mod. This mod will divide Fallout 4 in 4 different regions, which all have their very own unique landscape just like in Fallout 76. On a small side note, I can recommend using a mod called Commonwealth Critters with this because it makes everything just sound a bit more alive. But since this isn't available for Xbox or PS4, we need something different for you console users. Introducing Overgrowth, available for both Xbox and PS4. This mod will also turn the Commonwealth into a beautiful green lush. It sadly doesn't have 4 different regions, but it's still a really nice mod and comes pretty damn close to what it's like in Fallout 76. After taking a minute to look at the beautiful scenery, it's time to embark on our first quest, which will take us to the Overseer's Camp. But along the way we see a dead NPC with on it a pipe weapon. Sweet! 
but they do look a bit different from what we're used of in Fallout 4. They look newer. Introducing more realistic pipe weapon textures. More realistic pipe weapon textures is a mod that will make all pipe weapons look just the same as in Fallout 76. So that means all rust is removed and they all have a nice, clean, metalish look. We picked up the weapon, but let's see what else is in our inventory. This means we need to enter the Pip Boy. And when we do, we notice that the background is not paused anymore. Everything is still moving. Which brings us to the next mod called Fall Souls. Fall Souls is a mod that unpauses the game whenever you enter the Pip Boy. Normally, when you enter the Pip Boy in Fallout 4, it will pause the game, and this mod will undo that. I find it kinda unnecessary, and it's also really annoying when you try to change someone else's inventory, because that person will now just walk away since the game is not paused anymore. So, yeah. It is kind of annoying, but it does make the game more realistic. And finally, we arrive at the Overseer's Camp. Which reminds me, we grabbed one of those in Fallout 76, so let's start our own. Introducing the mod Fallout 76 Camp. This mod allows you to build a settlement wherever you like. On a hill, in a city, or maybe in the glowing sea if that's something you prefer. If you don't mind all the red storms of course. Well, it doesn't matter, because it's all possible with the Fallout 76 Camp mod. Now that we're talking about red storms, didn't Todd say something about that as well? And even view distant weather systems across the map. He did, which means we need a weather mod. Introducing Fallout 76 weather, almost identical to what you can find in Fallout 76. However, this is only for PC too. And there's also something better. True Storms Wasteland Edition, one of my favorite mods to this date. Available for both PC and Xbox. It doesn't just tweak and improve the weather, it fully replaces it. And it must be good because this mod has been downloaded over 3.5 million times. And those are just the PC downloads. Besides replacing the weather, it also adds a bunch of options. One of my favorite options is that when there is a red storm going on, ghouls will spawn around you and attack you. Which ups the fear factor by quite a bit. So yes, if you want the weather to be just the same as in Fallout 76, then Fallout 76 weather is the mod for you, but if you want it to be better, then I can highly recommend True Storm's Wasteland Edition. We are now walking away from the Overseer's Camp and heading into the direction of Flatwoods. In this post-apocalyptic town, we need to craft a bunch of items. For example, we need to get ourselves some water. In Fallout 4 survival mode, all you have to do is take a bottle and go to your nearest water pump. But here in Fallout 76, the water pump gives you dirty water and also irradiates you. Could there possibly be a mod for this? Well, as it turned out, there is. Introducing dirty water from pumps. Like the title says, water pumps now give you dirty water. And you can turn this dirty water into purified water as long as you have the right components. Making it even more realistic. In order to craft purified water in Fallout 76, we need to use the chemistry workbench. And in here we can see that a bunch of new items have been added, such as a diluted stim pack and a diluted Radaway. And if we go cooking a bit later, we can see that there are dozens of new recipes. That's a lot of new stuff, and I want it in my game. Introducing Recipe 76. One mod that will add both the chemistry items and all of the new cooking recipes. A grand total of 114 new recipes are added with this mod. And you can get these recipes in a different number of ways. You can find every single recipe scattered around the commonwealth, hidden inside containers and NPCs inventories, making it all one giant easter egg hunt. Or you can find 8 recipe collections hidden around the commonwealth, containing 10 to 15 recipes each. Or you can find a single cookbook containing all recipes known to man. Or lastly, you can just unlock them all via the settings holotape, but where's the fun in that? Well that takes care of the crafting aspect, so let's focus on something else. Weapons. Fallout 76 of course came with a bunch of new weapons to play around with, but three of my favorite ones have actually been turned into Fallout 4 mods. Let's start with the 10mm SMG. This mod will add the 10mm submachine gun from Fallout 76 to Fallout 4. It looks great, it has a bunch of modifications, and it's just fun to play around with. And well that's it.
Next up we have my second favorite weapon in Fallout 76, which is the MG42. The MG42 in the MG34 mod brings in two iconic German machine guns into Fallout 4 and they are awesome. There are a bunch of modification options, of course there are your normal ones like turning your receiver into a powerful receiver, but it doesn't stop there. You can exchange barrels, receivers, ammunition and even buy pods. And then we have my favorite weapon in Fallout 76 by far, and since I downloaded it, also in Fallout 4, the Ithaca Model 37. A pump action shotgun that comes pretty close to the pump action shotgun you can find in Fallout 76. This one also comes with a bunch of modifications and also comes with some legendaries that you can find in the commonwealth. My favorite modification is the explosive buckshot, because, I mean look at it. So, we now got food, camps and weapons, so let's throw in a little location mod. Introducing 76 Meyer Bunker for Fallout 4. This mod will add Abby's Bunker from Fallout 76 to Fallout 4. What does it do? Well, nothing except just being a new place for us to explore, pretty much. Maybe I will turn it into a custom settlement mod at one point, but who knows. Abby's Bunker is part of the Free States faction, there's also a other faction in Fallout 76 called the Enclave. Introducing America Rising, a tale of the Enclave. This is a huge quest mod that adds the Enclave to the game. In Fallout 76 we can find the Enclave underneath the White Springs Resort. And here we can find them underneath Vault 111. It's really fun and it's also very well done, the voice acting is mostly on point and the quests are remarkably difficult for some reason. And spoiler alert, if you do have any plans on teaming up with the Brotherhood of Steel at one point, then do know that you will not be able to continue with the Enclave. I finished it not too long ago and I recommend making a save just before you start the first quest of the Enclave and after finishing it, just go back to the save so you can still be friends with the Brotherhood of Steel and do quests for them. Let's take a big jump to March 13, 2019. The Wild Appalachia DLC has been released, it didn't add in the backpacks yet, but it did add in something else. A brewing station where you can craft a vast variety of beers and spirits, bringing us to the next mod called Craftable Alcohol. It sadly doesn't add in a new brewing station, but this mod does add in the possibility to craft beers and spirits at any given chemistry station, so that's quite nice. May 7th, 2019. The Wild Appalachia DLC is in full swing, and today the questline Forever Upwards is released. There are new challenges where you can earn badges. Nice. But no one cares. All they wanted was the backpack. Which brings us to the next mod called Backpacks of the Commonwealth. Available for both PC and Xbox. Giving us 15 unique backpacks, over 50 workbench mods and over 40 selectable colors. I love this mod because there's an option that turns this mod into an easter egg hunt. All 15 backpacks are scattered around the commonwealth and there's only one of them each. Let the hunt begin. Wait, um, what is, what is, what's that? Not enough backpacks? Over a hundred different combinations? Isn't enough? Okay, okay. Uh, how about this one then? Survivalist Go Bags. Adds another 40 plus unique looking backpacks and duffel bags. You can craft them at the camp station, so no need to go searching. I especially love the duffel bag that is filled with junk, because it's perfect for the provisioners that go from settlement to settlement. I got both mods installed, because, well, uh, just like everyone, I just love backpacks. Right? Everyone loves backpacks. June 10th, 2019. E3 press conference. Exactly one year after the trailer dropped. However, this time, they announced the Wastelanders update bringing back NPCs to the game. Well lucky for us, Fallout 4 already has a plethora of NPCs, so we don't even need to mod that. And besides the Wastelanders update, they also released a beta version of Nuclear Winter, a new battle royale mode for Fallout 76. Which we, of course, can't mod at all. And with that we're now at the end of this video. 
the mod list that turns Fallout 4 into an even better version of Fallout 76. I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did then please leave a like, subscribe for more and click the bell so you won't miss out on anything. And if I missed any mods or details from Fallout 76 that could be modded, then please let me know down below in the comments. My name is Tuesday and I will see you next time.